Well, hello, everybody. This is Dear Mama Sal, and we are live on a Sunday afternoon. So it's Soul Sunday. <laughs> Welcome. For those of you who are new to the broadcast, we do three broadcasts a week. Two on a Friday, uh, one at Friday lunchtime Pacific time, which is our skills and learn something and then one on friday evening seven o'clock on a friday evening pacific time where we laugh and then we do this one the sunday afternoon broadcast called soul sunday and happy easter to everybody that celebrates easter and i know it's an unusual one for all of us but we can cope because we are able to be flexible and we know that saving lives is what this is all about. And so I welcome you all, and I hope that you have had a glorious weekend. It's a wonderful, wonderful, uh, happy Easter to you too, Jody. Uh, it's a wonderful uh, sunny spring day here in southern British Columbia, and it's just beautiful to be alive, quite honestly. And I, again, woke up this morning and gave thanks for being alive because so many people are not. And so I want you to be grateful for every day um, during this pandemic, every day, and just realize that, you know, <laughs> being, being uh, housebound is not the worst thing that ever happened. It's what most people prayed for. You know, I'd, I'd love a vacation. <laughs> and so, you know, think about that. I wanted to wish for those of you who go back a long way with dear Mama Sal, uh, it's Boston Paul's birthday today. So happy birthday to Paul. Hi, Isabel. Hi, Farmer. Um, <laughs> how are things in Oz? And so, and happy Easter to everybody that just uh, signed on. So happy birthday to Boston Paul. And, you know, I hope that he had a wonderful Easter as well as a wonderful birthday. Uh, we did hear from Beth that her daughter, Victoria, got through the operation okay. We heard that she did have a drain uh, in, so uh, but we're hoping everything's fine. We'll wait for an update. Sometimes Beth comes in on a Sunday and gives us an update. Um, far as I know, uh, everybody else is doing fairly well. And if I'm wrong on that, Jody will remind me. And for those of you who don't know who Jody is, she is our admin. And boy, you know, between my two brain cells and hers, we normally manage to get, you know, a few things done. So a very happy Easter. Um, you'll go back to work tomorrow, Farmer. Okay. <laughs> well, actually, it's already tomorrow. So that's on Tuesday. You'll be going back to work. Yeah, I have to keep remembering that in Oz, it's already tomorrow. <laughs> Easter Sunday came and went, and it's now Easter Monday there, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody seems to be doing very well, and for that, I am very, very grateful indeed. All right, so, um, Jody, I just have to show you. I've really got a problem, Jody, because this continues to grow. This is a butter lettuce that I I got from the store and used half of it, and it looked like that. And then I just dropped it in a wine glass, and look what it's doing. But Jody, I need your permission to eat the 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 greens now because I really do want to eat them, and then see what happens. So <laughs> I know that you've got a particular affini affinity with this uh, particular plant. It's positively out of control, I know. But isn't that amazing? So I'm going to cut those external leaves off. And yeah, I'm going to eat them, all right? Isn't that amazing? Just a butter lettuce, and all I did was to drop it into a wine glass. Oh, and these here, I don't know if you can see them. But behind the butter lettuce, I have four, four um, romaine lettuces that I that I had during the last couple of weeks, and I just took the ends of them and stuck them in, and they're already this high. I stuck them in soil, but they're already this high. What I want to see is how long will that butter lettuce last? Um, you know, 
in that wine glass? That's what I want to know. Uh, how many times can I eat the wonderful spring greens from it? No, I don't have a green thumb. You know, I, I like to experiment. There is a difference. <laughs> I assure you, we have a dead orange tree, and I managed to kill off my hibiscus. And I now know, do not put anything up on the top shelves of my wall unit <laughs> in the winter, because obviously the heat really got up there and um, fried two of my favorite plants. So, but moving on. Today is Easter, so we're going to be talking a little bit about rebirth. But before I do, <laughs> now actually let me give you the first quote because it's relevant. The first quote that I have for you is, whether one believes in religion or not, and whether one believes in rebirth or not, there isn't anyone who doesn't appreciate kindness and compassion. True? Hi there, Erin. Good to see you. Happy Easter. And so the reason I wanted to start with that is because I had a delivery of groceries last night and... Obviously, I had forgotten to mention that I am uh, you know, allergic to garlic because they sent me feta cheese with garlic in it, which if you love feta cheese and you love garlic, it's got to be a great combination. Unfortunately, I can't eat it. So what I decided to do was to go, I saw my one neighbor uh, across the street was out in the sunshine. And so I <laughs> went outside. Well, I was about to try and go outside, when I opened my front door, I looked down and there were little baby Easter eggs on my doorstep. <laughs> Some Easter bunny came visiting. I have no idea who it was. I checked to see if it was Yvonne, but it wasn't. Um, and I'm thinking it might be the lady that I've met here. And I'm still trying to find out if it is her. But anyway, so then I, I stood... And I stood in the middle of the sort of road, you know, the, the, the roadway between the units here. And funny enough, both the neighbor on that side and the one across the road, both were outside at the same time and they were talking to one another. Now, that was a bit of a catch-22 for me because I've only got one thing of feta cheese. So I, I just said, do either of you like feta cheese? And I waited for a response, and the one on my across the road said, yes, I do. And I said, and can you take garlic? And she said, love garlic. And I said, well, then here you go. And I said, I'm going to put it down here just because of social distancing. You know, feel free. And I walked away, and she picked it up, and then she said to me, wait a minute. And I said, yes. And she said, how much do I owe you? And <laughs> it was so cute. And I said... No, honey, you don't owe me anything. Happy Easter. Enjoy. I unfortunately can't enjoy it because I can't eat garlic. <laughs> and, you know, it was just like, if you could have seen the look on her face, it was amazing. So here I was paying forward the unknown gift of kindness that somebody left you know, unless the Easter Bunny just pooped those eggs on my doorstep. I'm not quite sure about that. Anyway, I'm still trying to find out. I, it wasn't Yvonne. I checked with her. Um, anyway, I'm trying to find out if it's the lady within the complex that I've met that is a very kind human being. And so, you know, we'll see. But how many of you agree that a simple act of kindness uh, is amazing. Now, the interesting thing was that I had had a conversation with that particular neighbor during the week, um, and I'd been talking about the music that I could hear that was, you know, I'm deaf, and, you know, when, when you're deaf and you can hear music in, you know, your house, um, that's got to be fairly loud somewhere. So I just happened to say, are you the one with the music? And, and you know, what I've noticed is that I haven't heard the music since then. So, you know, I wanted to make sure that she didn't think that I uh, was going to be a nasty neighbor. I just 
<laughs> really. <laughs> and I just said, whosoever music it is, they got a really good bass on there. You know, it's the bass that I can hear. Probably because it's the only tone I can hear easily. <laughs> how about this one? I wonder how many of you agree with this, that every aspect of Western culture needs a new code of ethics and, and sort of rational ethics as a precondition of rebirth. I was absolutely horrified to hear that there was a minister in Kansas who thought he was above the law and decided to hold um, services, even though it is against the law. And what he said was, well, there was a loophole in the law. Apparently, bands can congregate or something. And, you know, my, my whole congregation were um, choir. And do you know something? I thought, he must know this is not right. And I'm certain he's justifying it and saying that, you know, that like Christ, they are, you know, on, on Easter, they, well, they, he rose again on Easter Sunday. But, you know, I, am, I, I could imagine the biblical reading that he did around that about why it was okay for them to take that level of risk. Yeah, but except there were women and children there, and guess what? They're all going home to families with more children. And I don't know about the rest of you, but my attitude is I would want to keep very close tabs on who they have now infected, and I think they should be punished for it. Why? Does the rest of the world get to be in isolation and, and it's not okay for them? Change is growth. For me, it's been a very spiritual and musical rebirth. Lenny Kravitz said that. How many of you have found just by being isolated, you are shifting? Can you feel it? Do any of you feel a difference in being isolated? Now, some of you are isolated with another person or with family members, and some of us are totally isolated. Um, but I just wondered if you can feel a difference, and if so, what is it for you? I definitely... Um, feel very peaceful. And I'm, as I said, I'm so grateful every, every um, morning I wake up. And, you know, I, I was listening to the British Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, saying that it was touch and go, whether he was going to make it in ICU. And I'm going, boy, did that guy find faith this week. And Ernest E. Faust said, a rebirth out of spiritual adversity causes us to become new creatures. How many of you maybe listen to the Pope um, give his address Easter Sunday Mass uh, and for the first time, I believe, uh, live streamed it? Uh, and I'm going, boy, that's, they'll do, you know, in a, in a lifetime it's never happened. But isn't it wonderful that we have that technology? And then there was Andre Botticelli, who, um, Bocelli, who, who actually gave a free concert in a cathedral uh, in Milan. You know, it, it, I don't know if you saw any of it, but uh, boy, that brought me to tears. And so here we are with all this difficulty. People are finding incredible ways to connect. I heard a whole choir today. Um, who all were singing in unison, but each one of them had individually recorded and they put all those recordings together. And I want to tell you something, that made me cry. Still does, apparently. So remember that in going through this, we are going to come out of it different people. Jody's saying, my routine hasn't changed too much. 
but I'm making a point to check on my friends regularly. I feel called to offer support. Yeah. Um, I'm actually, you know, starting to to sort of have a, a, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm sort of contacting my friends in rotation. I've sort of got a master list. And uh, obviously I contacted, I think most of them already uh, to wish them happy Easter, but I'm trying to do that during the week. I had a great chat with, for those of you who know Dougie, um, and you know, Dougie keeps saying to me, if, if you need me to pick anything up for you, you just let me know. And I thought that was so cute. Um, and I said, at the moment, I'm good. <laughs> and, you know, uh, it was so funny because I had these um, <laughs> I had these groceries delivered yesterday and I had ordered two 10 pound bags of flour. I think they were 10 pound. They're sort of like this big. <laughs> They're big. Um, but, you know, it was like, yeah, I think I'm good for the next apocalypse here. And then. There must have been a special deal on coffee because I bought yet another can. And I've already got enough cans to keep me going until the next decade, literally. Um, <laughs> you know, so this is like, uh, yeah, am amazing. Um, so, but what I was hoping was in that um, delivery yesterday was some fresh vegetables because I realized that I am nearly out of it. By the way, do any of you want to know how to keep celery fresh for the best part of a month? If any of you would like to know how to do that, I'd love to show you. So <clears throat> just know that it's it's all a challenge. But, you know, in that delivery, <laughs> there was some ginger. <laughs> Now, this is so simple that, that it's actually mind-blowing. Um, literally, I take a whole stalk of celery and I cut it in half or a third, depending on how big the, the bunch is. And then I just take about this much and I just roll it in paper towel. You know I reuse my paper towels. You know, I, I wash it. But literally just roll it in paper towel and... You know, put it in a Tupperware or whatever. And I have them stacked up. And they will last me for the best part of a month. Once, you know, for as long as it takes me to eat a whole stalk of um, celery. And, you know, towards the end, I will just chop the ends off. But I want to tell you, it keeps them fresh and crisp. They don't go wilty. You know, they're just awesome. <laughs> I recommend it. So, and the other thing is, um, how do I describe that? <laughs> all right, you've all heard about freeze dried things. Well, did you know that you can fridge dry things? Um, these are leeks, for those of you who know what leeks are. And all I do is I buy a big leek and I chop it up. But the same thing, I just leave it in the fridge like this, and it will slowly dry in the fridge. And so every day, if I'm making something, you know, I can just chop up some leeks and put it in what I'm making. But in the meantime, the rest of it is is dehydrating. And, you know... By the time, in, in other words, it doesn't go off. Whereas if I just left it the way that it was, it would. Uh, and I turn it over every now and then just to make sure it's drying equally. But it's just a really nice trick if you happen to be one or two people. Yes, Jody's saying, I never realized how much I took fresh vegetables, vegetables for granted until we started to go through this pandemic. Never again. We had salad last night, and I appreciated every bite. Yes, you know, I actually ran out of carrots. Um, all right, so um, Bam is saying, wash your hands after touching, Sal. That stuff will burn your eyes. You're talking leeks, well? I've never found that. 
<laughs> um, I've never found that leaks affected me. And by the way, um, one of the things that I am doing, just as I'm pretty sure you all are as well, but whenever I get any um, new vegetables into the house, I'm chopping them up and just dropping them in a solution of water and vinegar um, for about 15 minutes. And then I rinse them off and then put them in the fridge. So just so that you know, that's what I'm doing. Anyway, what I found out was in the delivery yesterday, the only vegetable I had was ginger. <laughs> and it was like, how did I not order carrots? <laughs> how did I not order, you know, whatever. Anyway, so carrots will be here on Tuesday, I hope. Karma brings us ever back to rebirth, binds us to a wheel of births and deaths. Good karma drags us back as relentlessly as bad, and the chain is wrought out of our virtues, holds as firmly and as closely as that forged from our vices. Hi, Carmen, good to see you. We're, we're doing fine, thank you. Yeah, Isabel is saying that's true. She's also noticed that she appreciates fresh vegetables a lot more and trying not to waste as much. Yeah. <laughs> and as you know, I'm taking my kitchen scraps um, and liquidizing them in my blender and then uh, giving them, to, you know, serving them up for my worm motel. So, Carmen, where are you from? So, John Stamos said, in the last few years, losing my father, going through a divorce, and getting some jobs I really wanted is making me a much more interesting person, I think. This all really does feel like rebirth. and a new chapter. <laughs> Jody is saying that I have her using reusing paper towels. Yeah. Um, you know, literally, I cannot, I cannot encourage you enough on this. If you use a piece of paper towel, um, I, I just stick it in a, a I have a little jar on my um, kitchen countertop. And when I've used a paper towel just to wipe something up, I just drop it in here. And every night before I go to bed, I just um, rinse them out and then I let them dry. And then I put them in a coffee tin and I reuse them. Ah, well, how about that? Um, Carmen, did you hear Boris Johnson's um, uh, broadcast this morning? Yeah, the, the reason I'm saying is because, boy, did he thank the NHS, that's the National Health Service in England, um, for saving his life. And, you know, it's funny because I've never heard him sound so genuine in, in, in some way, you know, you knew that he literally knew they had saved his life um, because it was touch and go at one point. And um, it was just so nice to hear somebody thank the National Health Service for what they have done. So thank you and continue to stay safe if you can. Yeah, he's doing well and looking well. I thought it was very genuine, and I don't mean disrespect to Boris, if I may call him that. Um, I don't mean disrespect to him, but he always looks a little um, cartoonish, if I can. That that is my view, and he didn't. He for he was probably the most authentic I have ever seen him, and because of that, it made me cry. It was just like wow, I didn't know this. 
about him. And I didn't realize that um, his girlfriend was pregnant at, at this time, which must have made it even more difficult. Carmen, it definitely spoke to me. Yeah, Carmen saying it spoke to her, the speech. Yep, it definitely did. And if ever anybody wants a lesson on how to be a leader and how to genuinely touch people, um, that was it. I, I was quite honestly, Carmen, I was stunned. I, I did not expect that from him at any level, quite honestly. I expected him to be flippant or whatever, and he was so genuine in his thanks. Dan Cook said, we all hope for breakthrough rebirth moments. I'd like to say that we are all getting a chance. I think there are going to be an awful lot of people that when this phase is over because there's a possibility that we may have another phase of this. And you know, my saying is be prepared, not scared. Um, I, I, I want to tell you, I think there are going to be a lot of people who once we're out of it are going to wish that they had done more with the time they had given them. How many of you feel that? You know, they, they are wasting this precious time rather than making the most of it. Yeah, it's interesting. Carmen's saying I may not agree with his politics, but it meant so much to name individual nurses. We are all blind in this. He has a tough job. Yes, I think any leader has a tough job. And it's very lonely at the top. We know that. Um, but, you know, I'm just, I, I think, you know, when he mentioned the names, I agree with you. When he mentioned the individual people who had helped him, it was like, wow, I don't think I have ever heard that. Those people must have been really touched, because I am. A text in the Tibetan Buddhism describes the time of death as a unique opportunity for spiritual liberation from the cycles of death and rebirth, and a period that determines our next reincarnation. I don't know if you believe in reincarnation, but what I wanted to talk about in, in this quote was, we are getting the opportunity to reincarnate ourselves. All right? I think an awful lot of people are going to slow down quite a bit. You know, I think they're going to learn what peace feels like. If they don't let the overwhelm of what is going on affect their brain, if they are able, you know, to do what we were talking about all last year, you know, to create this emotional intelligence barrier, which goes, you know, it's going on out there, I'm aware, I'm, I'm prepared, but not scared. And um, because my job is to carry on the best I can and to be the best person I can be within this. I've started doing online jigsaw puzzles, at least one a day, because I find it just makes me stop for a second. And yesterday, I don't know why, <laughs> out of nowhere, I suddenly got an ocular migraine. I don't know if any of you know what that is. That's when your, your eyes, it seems like your vision splits. It's like somebody took a, um, if you've ever seen cut glass crystal, you know, where it has that prism in it. It's like somebody goes <laughs> with your vision and it's like got this prism going through it. And um, that suddenly hit me yesterday afternoon. And it was just like, I am learning now not to be upset by stuff like that. I am learning to be able to say, oh, that's interesting. That must mean I need to slow down a bit. Even though I don't think that I'm busy, um, apparently my body is stressed at some level because otherwise that wouldn't be happening. And so I literally took a step back and rested for a while and then quietly did a jigsaw puzzle 
and you know, just took it easy. And I was fine this morning. Places that have experienced great defeat experience a kind of rebirth, which I think America has to do, unless we want to get more decrepit. I don't think we have to destroy the place totally. Rufus Wainwright said that. Um, I do believe that we will, in every country, go through a, a metamorphosis. I think we will change. I don't think there is any way that we can go through history. We have become history. They will talk about 2020, the year when the pandemic hit and, and so many hundreds of thousands of people died. Um, but you will also tell your grandchildren or great-grandchildren that you were alive at that time and, and, and they will sit in awe. If you read back now in history, you know, to the Spanish flu of 1918, I think, you know, it's like you read about that and you go, wow, I, I, I realize that I'm in history now. That's amazing. And, you know, some of us are more vulnerable than others, but it doesn't mean we're going to be affected, right? Just because we're more vulnerable than others does not mean that we are going to get it if we're careful. Dustin Hoffman said, there's a rebirth that goes on with us continuously as human beings. I don't understand personally how you can be bored. I can understand how you can be depressed, but I just don't understand boredom. So have any of you felt bored from being isolated? And the, the little tip I want to give you today is if any of you are feeling anxious through being isolated or depressed from being isolated, um, I would like to suggest a couple of things to you. One of the things we know is that anxiety has a real problem with numbers. It has been proven that you cannot count <laughs> and stay in an anxiety attack. And so one of the things I would recommend if you are prone to anxious thoughts is to then say to yourself, how many things can I write down of things that I can do with the rest of my day and number them? Because as soon as you start numbering, um, it will change the, the connection, if you like, to the anxiety. And it's not that you have to do all of those things. But it's just make a list. In making a list, you will help get yourself out of anxiety. And if you're feeling a little depressed, then think about what you can give. All right. I've always said that one of my key tools to get out of depression and stay out of it after a probably a third of my life uh, I spent in depression. Um, but the way that I got out and stayed out was to realize that you cannot think your way out of depression. And what you can do is do your way out, right? So whenever I start to feel that little vortex of, you know, I, I go, okay, it's time for me to do something. And I literally during the day um, will get up uh, at, you know, I have an alarm on my watch that goes off 10 minutes to every hour. And it's a reminder, how long have you been sitting? All right. How long have you been sitting? Now, a lot of you, you don't sit at all, but it's a very tempting when you don't have to go to work to sit and do nothing. And I would recommend that you make sure you keep active for at least eight hours a day, because it will help you, um, you know, keep your mental health. 
Bam is saying, be right back. I'm making Tracy breakfast in bed. Ah, what a nice thing. And you know, I'd like to mention that you're never too old to take up a new hobby. Right? Um, and I literally mean that you're never too old to take up a new hobby. Uh, I certainly never thought I'd be trying to do hydroponic um, vegetable growing in wine glasses at the age of 72. Um, but you know something? <laughs> it's such fun. Why? Because it's all an experiment. And I now have the first of my seedlings in my vegetable garden. And I'm trying, you know, luckily I, I have a lot of clear um, shoe boxes and I cover them up each night with a shoe box so that if in case the weather does turn cold, they will have that protection. I hope it's enough. So if you haven't started a hobby yet, uh, I would really recommend it. Jody's been doing a great job. She's uh, in the process of making masks for people. But, you know, she keeps hitting these little roadblocks blocks along the way. You know, she found the sewing machine but didn't find the cord. And then Lionel came up with an answer. And then she got all the material but couldn't get the elastic. And so she came up with another answer. And, you know, it's just a very interesting process because, as so many of you know, this is about the journey, not the result. What, what skills is Jody using to cope with the disappointment of not getting the things that she wants to make the things she wants to make? And, you know, and if at the end of it, by the time she gets all the bits, she doesn't need the masks anymore, I am certain it won't be a loss, all right? Because she will either turn that material into... Uh, something, um, you know, to, to to give to the homeless or do something. I know Jody well enough to know this will not go to waste. Um, Shahid Khan said, I'll be spending most of my time really relating to fans and developing the relationships, the rebirth, really, of the franchise in Jacksonville, where we will win on and off the field. Okay, so we found, you know, just in in my little space here, that it was possible to be neighborly without necessarily getting within six feet of somebody. Somebody was neighborly enough to drop, you know, Easter egg droppings on my front doorstep. Uh, and I'm certain they had such fun doing that. And I'll let you know when I find out who it was. Um, Trombone Shorty said, I grew up listening to the, to the Neville Brothers and the Rebirth Brass Band. Do any of you remember the N Neville Brothers? I can hear that deep tone right now. <laughs> So Cedric Richmond said of New Orleans, um, these past years, as we have been recovering and, are, and given our city a rebirth, we have been encouraged by our faith, our knowledge, and steadfast belief that we will pull through. There will be challenges and setbacks, as there have already been, but we will continue and we, the citizens of New Orleans, will prevail in bringing our city back. You know, I was listening this morning to an interview with the, I think it was the mayor of New Orleans, or the governor of, no, I think it was the mayor of New Orleans. And, you know, they, they went ahead and had Mardi Gras. And he has to admit that he didn't realize at the time of holding Mardi Gras what risk he was putting people under. And he said if he'd understood it better, he probably would have canceled Mardi Gras. And, and so you go, everybody is brilliant in hindsight, right? Hi, Beth. So Beth saying, I had to pick up tons of used gloves in the parking lot at work. 
we have to put garbage cans every two parking spaces. Please, people, carry a Ziploc bag in your car to dispose of your gloves or use garbage cans. Yeah, because again, you are putting people at risk who have to pick up those gloves. Good point. Thank you, Beth. How's Victoria doing today? Alice Roberts said, Easter is an ancient festival of rebirth, but it is also an excellent excuse for eating eggs. <laughs> I really like eggs of both the chocolate and chicken variety. But the chocolate ones, you must admit, can sustain only a fleeting interest, a sweet, sugary hit, and then it's gone. And there were four about this size, and I want to tell you, they tasted like heaven to me. <laughs> they didn't last very long. I brought them in from my doorstep, and I unwrapped them, and I <laughs> inhaled them. Welcome back, Jody. And so as we look at rebirth at this time, I hope that you're all finding that somewhere along there will be parts of our life as we know it um, that will drop away, and but there will be other parts of our lives which will blossom because of this change that we're all going through and the world is going through. It was said that Bill Gates has become the patron saint of philanthropy and the poster child of rebirth. And from what I can tell, rightly so. How many of you imagine that it must be really an interesting life being Bill Gates? You know, when you think, yeah, you know, he made it all the way to Harvard and... Did he drop out of Harvard or was it that Steve Jobs that dropped out of Harvard? I can never remember. Anyway, but you look at it and you go, I am pretty certain nobody imagined that Bill Gates was going to do what he did in his life. I remember my accountant way, 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 way back telling me about this whippersnapper that was in Seattle somewhere. Redmond, I think he said. But he said, you know, in the Seattle area somewhere and who, you know, was coming up was writing programs for computers and, and you know it, it was dos i think he started um uh, you know and, and and it was just like so and he said no no you need to know this this is a whiz kid serious whiz kid we're going to be hearing a lot about him and you know i look at it today and i think boy not only did he prove that to be true but then took his millions and has helped, I mean, he helped Rotary stamp out polio. I think they have just about achieved that now. You know, he has used his millions and billions to the greater good. And I think that must be a wonderful way to wake up every morning going, I have the ability to help so many. And some of us, you know, feel good when we can physically help people. And then there are others that feel good when they can perfect their craft to such a way that they make enough money that they can take that money and help people. And I think both have value. Daniel Morgan said, I believe in one God, the first and great cause of goodness. I also believe in Jesus Christ, the rebirth of the world. And I also believe in the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. And so at this time, let us remember that Easter is about rebirth. It is about taking the time to start again. You know, I, I find myself every day um, looking at different rooms in my house that got way overlogged with stuff, 
that I haven't put away. And I really look at it and I just ask myself, what piece of this room do you want to clean up today? You don't have to do it all, but you need to take one piece of it and clear it away. And so far I've managed to get you know, my, my bathroom, my bedroom, most of the craft room. I'm wo still working on tidying up the rest of the kitchen, the bits you can't see. Um, and then I've got quite a job to do still in the dining room. And only when I finished that and the living room areas am I going back to unpacking because obviously there were too many bits that I didn't know where to put them. So I just had them lying around. And this is called, no, <laughs> this is not going to work. Nick Nolte said, birth is violent and out of violence is our only chance of rebirth. So I do believe that all that we're going through will help us relook at our lives, our relationships, how we spend our spare time, how we value fresh fruit and vegetables, Jody. I love that. That is so true. Um, I didn't realize that my life revolves around fresh carrots. And I'm growing them, but, you know, they're not ready yet. <laughs> but, you know, it's just like, wow, um, it's going to be really interesting. And I have no idea really how quickly a carrot grows. Oh, Carmen is asking, when do we get the house tour? So the new place is looking good. I hope you're happy there. Quite honestly, I've done the house tour. Um, it probably won't happen again until I've unpacked a lot more because I still have so much going on um, that, you know, it, it, it wouldn't look like progress to anybody. And, you know, I, I was trying to explain to some of the viewers that when I started, all the boxes in my craft room were up literally at my eye height. And I'm now down to knee height. Um, but if you hadn't seen that, it still looks so messy in there. What you don't realize is how far down I have come. <laughs> so I will, you know, I will update every now and then. How about this one? I am trying to make better choices. For me, this is a kind of rebirth. If I make the Olympic team, great. If not, I look at myself after eight years and ballooning up almost 200 pounds and getting on the biggest loser. You know what? I will get my life back again. And that's what truly matters to me. All right. So I think that is part of rebirth is when you can see what you don't like in your life, and you can let it go, right? And I do find that I have to do it in very small ways. Hi, Jonas. Yeah, Carmen, I'm glad that you understand. That's the way I do things, one step at a time. So at the moment, Carmen, if I can give you an example, I have one box of what I call crud um, in my bedroom that I've been looking at for about a month. And I haven't wanted to do it because I know it's crud and the crud's been there a long time. And what I decided was I'm going to take little boxes, like, you know, not shoe boxes because I'm using those in the garden at the moment, but, you know, small boxes. And I'm literally going through the crud going, that has to do with nails and nail files and, and, and nail polish. And, okay, that all goes in one box. And the stuff that has, you know, that, has to do with um, glasses. I'm amazed how many pairs of glasses I've got. You know, uh, eye lens cleaner, you know, glass cleaners and so forth. That's going in another box. And the stuff that has to do with hair is going in another box. <laughs> you know, and then at least I know. And that way, yeah. it's much slower. But you know what I've found is that I... I can get to the bottom of the box and just turn it upside down and go, and the rest of it's crud. 
<laughs> you know? So it's quite an interesting process. And I have got through, a, you know, I think it's two boxes of crud this week just doing that. Yeah. So in other words, don't try and put it all away. My goal is get it into a box that's relevant, but it's a smaller box. And then if necessary, I can take this one small box. And I did that. Um, all the stuff to do with my nails, I, I literally put a label on it, said nails, and I stuck it away. Because I can keep adding to it. Everyone focuses on the earthly state. But how cool might death be? I believe in spiritual rebirth. And I can't wait to experience that. That was said by Barry Zito. Again, be prepared, not scared, right? How about this one? I invite all those who share my anxiety about and hopes for the future and who burn with the desire for a political rebirth to enlist with us. And addressing myself especially to the young, I invite them to become vanguards in the sorte of national reconstruction for a proud and happy Greece. That obviously was said by Constantinus Kaminaris. But you know, this is like you understand that when you when you are prepared um, to move on. I was talking to Doug about. Bernie Sanders and everything that was going on politically, because, you know, we, we talk a lot of politics together. And Doug and I were talking about, you know, who might Biden pick as a, a running mate, if you know, and so forth. And, and one of the things I realized is I wonder what they will do for Bernie, right? Because that is twice he has run that hard and that well. And, you know, he probably is too old now to do that again, right? And so I wonder what position they will end up giving him. I hope it's something that makes him happy, because I do genuinely believe he deserves that. Hi, Nyasha. Nyasha saying, Mama Sal, you're so right when you said that this virus has taught all of us various lessons, apart from learning different things. I said to myself that I'm no longer going to take things for granted. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about you when I was tidying up uh, yesterday, Niasha. And I I don't know if you heard what I said about how I am uh, emptying boxes in a tidy way. But I thought you might like that because, you know, I know that you, you know, have smaller boxes in your life. And it just is an easy way to do it and keep everything tidy. And then you can, you know, even if you're not finished, you've got the big box that you're trying to clear, but then you've got the little boxes of what you've already sorted. And so I think it's a really nice, easy way to do it. And I keep my boxes out until I fill them. Um, now, I said that and yesterday I put the nail one away because I thought I'd finished with all the nail stuff. And then, of course, the very next thing I saw was another thing to do with nails. <laughs> So I'm hoping that all of you will not come out of this and regret the time you wasted. That's the point that I'm trying to make. I believe that that will happen to a lot of people. I, you know, when they say to you, when you were isolated for that length of time in 2020, what did you do? I know that Jody has already said, not much has changed for her. She's busier in some ways than she was before because she's motivated to do something for others, which she always does, but, you know, something specific, right? She, she wants to make the masks. Um, she cooked, am I right, Jody? You cooked a, a beef roast and all the trimmings today and made cinnamon buns. She bought herself a bread maker uh, and she cooked these amazing looking cinnamon buns. And I thought I would really love those, but you know, I'm really not meant to have them. So do you want to see my little cinnamon buns? 
<laughs> Jody. <laughs> I thought you would, I thought you'd like to see that I made baby ones. <laughs> I made little baby ones and they are whole, they're multigrain. Um, <laughs> and it was just like, I can still have cinnamon buns. I just need to do it differently, right? Be more creative. Now, you and I know my idea of a cinnamon bun is something this big. But, you know, what I said was I can make some little ones like this and enjoy them. Well, there you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Multigrain cinnamon buns. Ah. It's the icing that's so good. <laughs> but mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. but you know if I ate cinnamon buns this size it's not going to ruin my day Oh. Don't tell anybody. I just disinfected this, <laughs> this worktop. So, can you see what I'm saying here? Which is, Jody, when 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 I got um when I got diagnosed with pre-diabetes. I really did think it was an all or nothing thing. Do you know what I mean? That I was never going to be able to have anything nice again. Um, but what Jody taught me, and part of my rebirth in education of, of eating, is that, hey, I can still have anything I want, just not as often. And so, Jody, the fact that you had a smack up, you know, roast dinner with cinnamon buns and everything else for Easter, um, you know, you know that that's going to cause a spike in all sorts of things for you for one day. And it may take you three or four days to get everything back in balance again, but you know you can because you taught me how to do it. Therefore, you know how to do it. Okay, so Niasha is saying, I've got five large bottles of liquid soap and six bars of soap. And they all have to last until December. I want to tell you, if you've got five large bottles of soap, I am, uh, I think you'll end up that it'll last you for a year. And Niasha, I am delighted. You know, it's funny how um, even little boxes this size are useful. All right. Or if you got when you're sorting out things like makeup and 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 stuff in your bedroom, uh, anything that's small is useful. It's just like I'm going to throw this category of stuff into this box, and I've got I what I've got in the Asha a shoebox size things. All right. So Isabel saying I'm like you, Niasha. I hope I won't lose this good habit when everything goes back to normal. I think we've learned the lesson. I hope so. I really hope that we all have. Jody said, I remember, it's daunting at first. You have to learn to work within a framework and you can have treats in different ways, still delicious, absolutely. You know, I've even found, I know this sounds amazing. Hmm. Hmm. Somewhere here, I don't know where I've put them. Somewhere here, I have a bag. Yeah, there they are. <laughs> of 
older marshmallows, miniature marshmallows. So, you know, there's part of me that would have said, how come? <laughs> and I'm going, no, marshmallows basically <laughs> it will last forever, right? And so I'm thinking, how many treats can I make with these? Um, you remember I was saying, You remember I was saying to save the bottoms um, of your cereals, okay? You know, the crud that's in the bottom of your cereal packet. I just keep making muffins and I literally take a handful of this stuff and I sprinkle it on top. And it's awesome. And at the very bottom, if you look at it, guess what that is? <laughs> Sweetener. Um, so I just, every time I make muffins, and by the way, um, <laughs> I, I make like, see? Don't you think that's cute? And that's cereal crud. Little bits of leftover whatever. And I think these are oats and applesauce. I think I put some applesauce in there. So it's about, we can get very creative. I think... Looks like a bakery muffin. Of course it does. Anyway, thank you very much, Isabel. Was it Isabel who said, is there, no, no, I think it was Carmen. <laughs> is there anything I can't do? Um, if I want to do something, I'm amazed what I can do. So this, this experiment. This experiment is really important to me. This one, you see, this is about... I really didn't know this was possible to do in a wine glass and just have it by a window. But how many of you know that these are going to be tasting so good in a sandwich or just a, a little mini salad all on their own? And I am going to eat them this week. I'm going to cut the whole of that lot off and eat it and then see what happens. But if you look very, very carefully, you can also see that I've got new growth coming at the bottom of the stalk. I have no idea what it's going to do. But there's part of me that wants to grow a, a carrot top. Wait. I'm trying to find a good example here. Yeah. Um, you know, my ca I've planted a couple of carrots, but um, these carrots are beginning to get roots. Can you see that little root there? Now, what I don't know is what happens next. I don't know if the roots keep going down and the orange keeps growing up. Does anybody know? Has anybody grown carrots hydroponically? I'll be able to let you know. Because as soon as it's got, you know, enough roots on it, I will then put it in a wine glass as well. Because I'm going, I've got a lot of wine glasses that sit around doing nothing. And it looks to me like I might be able to create a complete indoor garden of fresh fruit, vegetables. And if I can do it, anybody can. But the question is, how many months does it take? <laughs> So, Jody, how long? I, I think we've had this one going about a month now. Would that be fair? And that's what it's done in a month. So I'm trying to work out how many butter lettuces would I need to be able to sustain myself. And I've also got all the um, romaine lettuces. So I'm trying to work out how many do I need going at any one time. 
Okay, so you're saying carrots about three months. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, Nyasha, you know, oh, it's, it's a butter lettuce. It is a lettuce. That's what it is. Uh, Nyasha's saying that she wants to turn her soap bars into liquid soap. Do you know how easy that is, Nyasha? I do it all the time. I also find it more hygienic. You know, it's, it, a bar of soap gets, you know, it, it gets dirty, I think. Um, so I also do that. So do you want to know how to do it? Most crops are planted and harvested within three months. Okay. So I've basically got to work out how many of each thing I need. That's what I'm going to work on, farmer, is to, you know, I this place is so light throughout the whole year that I can actually have a complete garden growing inside. Um as I found out. <laughs> so I just want to know how many lettuces do I need. Okay, so literally, Niasha, just take, um, you know, something about this size, right? And fill it with water and drop the soap, bar of soap in. And then every now and then, Niasha, just go like this with it. And then it will, um, it will dissolve a bit more and then just keep going like this. And eventually... You can just pour off the soap uh, and water and use that in, in a dispenser and then just fill it up with more water and keep doing it. You'll be amazed how long it lasts. I've done that for the longest time. By the way, uh, what soap did you buy? Some soaps are better than others. All right, so Beth is saying I heard that growing... In water, it makes the plant not as nutritious because it's not in soil. Um, I'm feeding mine every day, Beth, um, just so that you know. Um, I literally have a little water bottle that I sprinkle as instant rain, but in here I have nutrients. Um, so every day they're getting fed nutrients that they would normally get from the soil. So I'm hoping that it will work. Um, I want to show you something. So this was an experiment. I wanted to see I wanted to see if I planted uh, butter lettuce in an egg carton, but I put the egg carton in a shoebox so that I could have the water coming out. And uh, I've got to transplant all of those. That's amazing how they grew. Yep. So I'm going to let you know, because you know I'm going to keep playing with it. And um, to me, it's about... It's a, an experiment, and it, it's a hobby, right? And that's how I'm looking at it. So when I eat those, I'm going to be really, like that lettuce, I'm going to be really happy. And, you know, my romaine lettuce is nearly ready to eat some of it as well. <laughs> so it's, it's been fun so far. So when I talk about rebirth, do you understand... Um, Yes, and that's what I've done. You know, that's I've found that out the hard way as well, farmer. What farmer is saying, keep the actual core of the stem above water and just have the roots. In fact, I'm trying to keep the water level uh, about an eighth of an inch below where the roots start. That's what I found works pretty well. Can you see that, farmer? You can actually see the roots coming down and then they go into water. Yeah. So that's what I'm learning, you know, and it's all an experiment. And if it works, I save some money and I will have had a lot of fun doing it. 
All right, enjoy, enjoy your Easter dinner, Isabel. Thank you for being here. Well, you know something, Niasha? I think we're a lot alike, quite honestly. You know, everything that I hear about you is that you and are very much the same, right? You like experimenting. You like finding out how things work and live. And so, yeah, my question is, you know, I don't think I'm doing anything that you can't do. <laughs> but, you know, I'm quite certain that the people going, it's much easier just to get it in the store. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, as long as we can get it in the store. So farmers saying almost anything goes from seed to harvest in three months. Is it from seed to harvest or from seedling to harvest? That's the question. I think it's going to be a fun experiment, and I'm hoping you guys are enjoying the process of it. All right, so Jody is giving me the heads up to do the countdown. Thank you, Jody. <laughs> I would have sort of remembered, I think. Maybe not. <laughs> Now, we are going to do an experiment this week, just in case anybody's here that didn't hear the broadcast. We're going to do a Facebook Live testing a couple of times this week so that we can find out. Uh, I want to do at least one broadcast where everybody can see what everybody else looks like. And I might do, um, you know, a couple of them uh you know, while we're all in lockdown and things, just so people can go, oh, that's what Isabel looks like. Or that's what Niasha looks like. If you want to be seen, if you don't want to be seen, that's fine. You just carry on exactly the same. But we will be doing them on Facebook. And so we're going to try a couple this week. Jody and I are going to do some experiments. And I don't know whether you can automatically join in. That's what we're going to find out. All right, so Valentine's Day is just 10 months and one week away. Christmas, just 256 days away now. And if you're thinking about getting your Christmas cards in the mail, <laughs> write them while you've got time and then get them in the mail in about seven months' time. <laughs> yeah, farmer looks really handsome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> says farmer yeah um but you know farmer i think it is amazing because some people you know we automatically get a mental picture of and then when we actually see them we go wow look at that i, I think the one that stunned me the most was oz although he is very hesitant to go on camera about anything all right but what i i you know i i've seen pic you know he sent me private pictures clean ones. Um, he sent me private pictures and things, and I keep looking at him going, whoever dreamt he was that good looking? <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, everything you sort of think about Oz, you know, <laughs> I, I really did see him with the hat and the corks hanging down, you know, but no. Um, yes, it's nice to put a face with a name. We stopped doing that because we got so many trolls, and, and it was really painful to try and do anything uh, of any depth, you know, with so many trolls around. So I'm not saying we will do it all the time. I, it's not what I want to do, but I would like to do it occasionally just so we can update everybody. U.S. Thanksgiving is seven months and 17 days away. And the Canadians, we only have six months and two days because we have ours in October. U.S. taxes, you've now got three months left. And the Canadians, we've only got a month and 20 days. Um... Yeah, uh, all right, Nia's just saying he, she was watching Benji recently and saw that he built a greenhouse to keep his seedlings in. Guess why? <laughs> um, yeah, I was talking to him. I'm actually waiting for mine to arrive. Um, but I was talking to him about, you know, getting ahead of the game. And also, um, it's, I thought it would be a really good hobby for the, for the girls, you know, 
give them something else to do every day to look after their plants. Yeah. And and then so to me it was like you know and and I every week when I talk to the girls I ask them how their plants are doing and and what did they grow and I've been sending them pictures of how my seedlings are doing you know and so forth. <laughs> well, I guess we don't have any days until Easter. Oh, three hundred and sixty-five. I guess. All right, I better change that one up. <laughs> And for those of you who did Lent, you're, you're over it now. Um, it's hard to believe, but I moved three months and one day ago. <laughs> I will eventually be unpacked, I guess. I realized that I definitely wasn't enjoying my house as much because it was so untidy. And that's a good thing. I've learned something through all of this. Which is, you know, if if you haven't got time to put it away, don't unpack it. Um, <laughs> Carmen saying, yeah, his seedlings seem to be coming along great, but they seem to have a bit of rain there. Yeah, we're in the Pacific Northwest. I mean, he and I, uh, you know, I'm in Canada and Benji obviously is in Washington State. But, you know, we it's not about competition. It's about... Um, you know, it's about we're, we're learning, we're doing things and sharing knowledge. He didn't know about growing things in toilet paper rolls, <laughs> right? So, um, so once my carrots get some roots on them, I put them in a toilet paper roll, like, like this, and then... No, I've just managed to break that one. But anyway, and then they will stay in here until I can see the roots come through the cardboard of the toilet paper roll. And that means that the roots are strong enough to go through cardboard. Think about that. Plus, the cardboard will protect them when they go in the ground. So I will plant the whole thing, you know, including the toilet paper roll, into the ground. Right, and then the cardboard will disintegrate in time. But it's a really nice way. And by the way, I found that these plastic beakers, great. I definitely have found a system that works for me. But I want to grow one in, in a, I want to grow one in a wine glass because I'm pretty sure you all want to see what happens, right? I mean, I don't know about you. It's not fun when you can't see them. I do want to warn you, though, if you decide to grow this way, you do need to change the water at least every other day. I actually change mine every night before I go to bed. Right. So <laughs> are the things I've learned. Um, yes, so now then, but I have owned the house exactly two months today. So, you know, I moved a week, a month before. So now I, I, I have owned the house for a straight two months. Yes, Carmen is saying there is definitely something quite satisfying about eating homegrown vegetables or fruit. Now, the only thing that worries me, Carmen, and it's something I need to work on, is I did notice in the winter, I don't know if any of you remember that, when I got snowed in, when I first came to visit here, um, <laughs> a bunny rabbit came to visit and I'm going, am I going to be growing all these vegetables for the bunny rabbit? Because obviously we got bunny rabbits in the area. And so I may need to come up with a, an anti bunny rabbit system, <laughs> you know, or critters in general. So I'm not quite sure how to do that yet, but I totally agree with you, Carmen. I, I've, I found that a homegrown strawberry just is totally different taste from one that you buy or a homegrown tomato. And did you did you hear how I did the tomatoes? I literally took a grape tomato and I sliced it horizontally and I used yeah you know, straight from the fridge and put it in earth and seedlings came up. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> you know, I would have thought it would have been nuked 101 times, you know, uh, but Literally, I just cut it horizontally and I just planted the little strips and those seedlings grew. 
So pretty, pretty interesting stuff. And I might be grateful for it. <laughs> I wish, wish they were ready now because I ran out of fruit, vegetables. But, um, you know, we can do that. So I look at it and go, Easter is a time of rebirth. Not only of our faith, but also of our mentality. I would like you all to see these coming months and we've only just started, all right? Be prepared, not scared. Be prepared to be in this for the long haul. And, you know, I was, one of the things I love about Dougie is his I can do it attitude. Um, all right, so hang on a second. Nyash is saying, I love gardening, but my foot and my eyesight aren't so great. I know I can plant them in small pots on the gallery and then replant, but my home surroundings aren't flat. No, you can do it anywhere. You can grow them. Have you, you know, all right, Nyasha, do me a big favor. Look up plastic bottle gardening. Yeah, on, on YouTube. <laughs> you can you can grow a vegetable garden in plastic bottles if you want to. All right, this is not about it's it's not about your foot. Your foot has nothing to do with gardening, honey. All right, <laughs> I don't need my feet to do this. All right, you can do this if you want to. You can feed help feed the family if you want to. It's be a, you know, and you've you've got wonderful weather there for growing stuff. <laughs> oh, you 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 will have a lot of research to do, Niasha. I need you to remember you can do anything you want to. You can do it without any eyesight. There are people that grow stuff and they can't see a thing. You can still see some things. And it's it's about you know, it, it's about learning how to do it with what you have. Imagine if I said, oh, I can't do it because I'm too old. I don't believe that. I saw Jody's wonderful cinnamon buns and went, how do I make mini ones? <laughs> you know I didn't get a recipe out. <laughs> right? Um. <laughs> You know, I literally took my, <laughs> I literally took my multi-grain starter that I have in the fridge all the time, okay, and I added some flour to it and I made a dough, not too much, and um, then I rolled it out. I really like rolling dough; it makes it work so much better. Anyway, I rolled it out and then I covered it with some butter and some brown sugar and some cinnamon and then I rolled it up and I cut it. Instant mini. Oh, and I baked it in. I bought some of these little, um, actually it came in a set of three, but I cut them into individual ones. But I, I just literally, you know, put them like five each into one of these and cook them. And Jody's saying, I sent a picture of cinnamon buns, and a few hours later, voila, Sally had mini buns. Sal had mini buns made. Yeah, it, they look so good, Jody. And it was just like, I really fancy having some of those, but I can't have those. But anyway, so the other thing is, I've perfected a way to make bread where my hands don't have to get messy. Uh, that was always the thing for me. The thing I didn't like about bread was you know, it, when your hands get all messy. And I, I've now got to the stage where I can do it without getting my hands messy. So that pleases me. And part of it is always having this stuff going. Now, my question to you all is, what one thing do you want to do this week? Before we go, tell me. What would you like to get done this week? How do I do what, honey?
and we'll find out. Okay, the bread, please. I mean, okay. Um, well, I was talking about it to Linda, right? Um, literally, I take. <laughs> um, <laughs> I take about a teaspoon of whole wheat flour, a teaspoon of rye flour, a teaspoon of quinoa, and I mix it with the flour that's left on the um, breadboard after I've made my other bread. And I mix it all up, and it's pretty liquid, Jody. Uh, it's sort of like porridge. Um, and so, and I just leave it in my fridge. And then when I want to make bread, I take this as the base of it, um, about half of this, three quarters maybe, and I mix that with flour. And then it makes a really nice uh, multigrain bread. All right, so Carmen's saying, I'd like to be less anxious, especially at work. Trying to keep positive, it's not a task as much of a goal. Yeah, so here's what I would do, um, Carmen, if, if you would like a, a suggestion on that, let me know. So, because what I'm thinking is, that you and every other wonderful healthcare provider. Um, what I would do is think about what could you do to your, um, you know, when you mask up and everything, is there something you could do, you know, like maybe paint a big smile on your, on your mask? All right, where everybody that sees you is going to end up smiling. Think about what you can do to make others smile and you will be less anxious because all day long people are going to be smiling back at you. Does that make sense, Carmen? And, and I think about that um, because I can remember that uh, Dr. Sanjay Gupta's daughter made a mask for Anderson Cooper, and it was like cowboys and things. And if you could have seen, if you could have seen how excited Anderson was to get that mask, you know, the fact that it was handmade meant a lot to him. But it was cowboys. <laughs> Apparently, he was just so excited about that. And I, you know, you can imagine every time he wears it, he's making people smile because he's got these little like Toy Story type cowboys um, on his mask. But I'm thinking that you, Carmen, have the ability to change other people's lives. And in doing that, you will help your own anxiety. Because, you know, if everybody that sees you automatically will smile. And if you can change the smile each day, you know, learn learn how to do that. Yeah, have big teeth one day, you know, or and have one tooth blacked out one day. You know, think of fun things that you could do with that mask, and you will have impact on everybody. Your patients, your your fellow um, staff members, everybody. You'll probably start a trend. <laughs> And in fact, that would be a lovely thing to do. Let's all, you know, draw faces on our, you know, draw mouths on our masks so that we can make people smile because it's a bit scary to see somebody in a mask. And you know, just test it out, see what the patient, how the patients react to it. <laughs> um, so what I would, what I would encourage you to do, Carmen, is to. Keep saying, not what can't I do? You remember, that's what we say here. It's not what we can't do, it's what can we do? All right, there's so many things that we can do. All right, so we encourage you to keep doing what you're doing and know that you can only do the best that you can. And we understand that. 
We are just so grateful. And, you know, Farmer, if he's still listening and if having breakfast with Tracy or not, but, you know, Farmer, we are so grateful that you are busy supplying meat so that we can eat. Um, you know, all of you who are frontliners, thank you. And if any of you have got family members who are frontliners, make sure that we keep thanking them, please, and let them know they might not hear it enough, but we do appreciate the risk. You know, they are like, you know, soldiers in a war. They're frontline. So I'm sending you all a wonderful Easter hug and reminding you that we can rebirth ourselves, if you like, every single day. Every day when you get up, whatever you didn't get done yesterday, it's over. Now you get to start again. What would you like to do today? What, you know, what would be a real accomplishment to do today? What would be fun to do today? You know, have, you've got the time. Use it well. You know something, Neosha? <laughs> you, you needed to find us, and I'm so glad that you did. <laughs> and by the way, Neosha, um, do, do you want me to get, let people know about your um, progress that you got on your leg, in your foot? What the doctor said? It's a pleasure, honey. <laughs> it's my contribution. What can I say? Um, ca can I update the, the viewers? Yeah. Yeah. So Niasha's doctor um, has identified that, that Niasha has struggled with a club foot her whole life, and, and she didn't know that. And now they're going to try and get her a um, brace to wear. And Nyasha, just remind me, how much do they say that's going to cost? About three and a half thousand. And so my question to you would be, um, do you have um, any sort of insurance that will help pay for that? Or do you have to raise that money? Does the family have to help you raise that money um, for you to be able to get it? I didn't quite understand that when you were talking about it. Because I'm pretty certain that that would be an ideal thing to do crowdsourcing type money for. And certainly, um, Yeah, it is sad that your parents never told you and, and just, you know, cursed you the whole time growing up. Yeah, that's sad, but, you know, it, that's gone, right? Can't change that. You can change the rest of your life, you know, and that is what we're working on. Oh, it's 3500 for both braces. Okay, so that's... All right, and they will be custom fit for that, right? They will custom make them for you. Yeah. So, you know, my feeling is, um, is you know, what I'm trying to find out, you know, do you think the family is going to be able to help you with that? In terms of raising the money, you know, your extended family. You're going to get both your feet cast. Okay, good. So that that's how they'll do the 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 correct um, fitting. I am so happy for you that you have, I'm very proud of you, Niasha, because a year ago, you would not have found this out. You would have just carried on struggling. You would not have asked the right questions. And so, you know, it's really amazing what you have learned to do 
in terms of being responsible for yourself. And I want you to really understand that you have taken a major step on your own two feet to do to find this out. Right? To ask the right questions and get the right answers. I for that I am I want to tell you it touches my soul that you did that. So you've decided to get the money yourself without help from your family. Okay. So, you know, let us know if if there's anything we can do to help you with that. All right. So, everybody, let's all take that lesson from Nyasha, which is things don't change unless you start talking about them, unless you start really wanting them. You see, Nyasha could have carried on believing that she, you know, she was lazy or whatever. But, you know, when she started to realize she had the right to know what was wrong with her foot, <laughs> and she started to ask the doctor the right questions, guess what? At 35, she got the right answers. And so that is a rebirth in itself. No, Niasha, I thank you for thanking me, but here's the truth, Niasha. You did it, honey. You did it. All right? We talked about how to do it, but you actually did it. And that is what makes you a superstar, right? I am certain that it was not easy and you were a little bit scared. But the truth is you found out that you can act like an adult and you get adult answers when you ask the right questions. <laughs> it's your choice, Nasha. Um, that's your choice, honey. Um, but I would tell you as, as a, um, a human being and a Christian that the greatest gift you can give people who have done things like this in my life, the greatest gift I have to myself is to forgive. Why? Because it releases me. I don't ever have to forget. I just need to forgive <laughs> and move on. That is the trick. All right, everybody. Uh, have a wonderful week. We'll pop up a couple of times on Facebook during the week if we get brave. Hey, Jody. And in the meantime, enjoy what's left of your Easter weekend. And we will catch up with you on Friday, if not before. This is Dear Mama Sal saying, please look after one another and please be grateful every day that you wake up, that we are still waking up and that we are still able to talk to one another. This is Dear Mama Sal saying, Keep rebirthing yourself every day. And bye-bye for now. Good to see you. Bye.